Now let's compare and contrast the primary and the secondary response of our immune system to some particular pathogen. So let's begin by defining and discussing what a primary response is. So the first time that our body is ever invaded by some particular pathogen that carries its own antigen, our body, our immune system responds in a certain way. And this response we call the primary response. So let's suppose our pathogen makes its way into our tissues and releases its pathogenic antigen. Now, at this particular moment in time, we have never actually seen, our immune system has never actually seen this, uh, this particular antigen. And what that means is, we're going to have no corresponding antibodies in our body, in our blood, that can actually bind to that particular antigen. So at least in, in the beginning, our concentration of antibody that is specific for that antigen will be zero. Now, right away when we're infected, the innate immune system kicks in and we can have the process of inflammation take place that essentially prevents that infection from spreading to other parts of our body. But our adaptive immune system will actually take time to take into effect. And so we're going to have to wait a certain amount of time for our adaptive immune system to mobilize itself and to actually create the appropriate lymphocytes that are needed to create those antibodies. So our adaptive immune system will need to create the appropriate plasma cells that can produce the antibodies that are specific to that infecting antigen. Now, once we have all those plasma cells, once we have all those active lymphocytes, then our antibodies will begin to be produced and those antibodies will be released into our blood and so the concentration of the antibodies in our blood will begin to increase sharply. So if we plot the concentration of antibodies that are produced versus time, we basically get the following diagram. So the y-axis is the concentration of our antibodies, our immunoglobulins, and the x-axis is the time given to us in weeks. So at week zero, we essentially have that pathogen invading our body, infection takes place. Now, it's the first time that we are ever infected by that particular pathogenic antigen and that means, at least initially, during the latent period, we're going to have a zero concentration of antibody in our blood because we're not going to have those antibodies that can bind specifically to that infecting antigen. However, over time, when the adaptive immune system actually is mobilized, it will have those plasma cells that will be able to produce those antibodies. And in that moment in time, we have the logarithmic phase taken to effect. And what the logarithmic phase describes is these plasma cells producing and releasing the antibodies into our blood. And so we see a sharp increase in our concentration of immunoglobulins. But eventually, we have this leveling off process taking place and then we have the decline phase and the decline phase takes place because our body is actually winning our antibodies are binding to the antigens and they are labeling them for destruction and so our immune system is able to destroy the infecting pathogens along with their antigens and so that's why <clears throat> eventually over time we see a drop in our concentration of immunoglobulins until it drops to very low undetectable levels as shown in the following diagram. And so this process ultimately takes place about four weeks as shown in this particular case for this particular invading pathogen.
Now, the primary, immu uh, the primary immunoglobulin that is used for this particular primary response, and in general, the major type of antibody that is used for all primary responses is immunoglobulin M. So remember, we have five different classes of antibodies. We have five different types of antibodies. And one of these antibodies is immunoglobulin M. And it's immunoglobulin M that is produced predominantly in the primary response. Now, immunoglobulin M forms a pentamer. And what that means is, five individual antibodies orient in the following uh, format to basically create this pentamer structure and they are held together by disulfide bond. So this is our primary response. Now what about a secondary response? So let's suppose as soon as the primary response is over our pathogen reinfects our body so the same type of pathogen with the same exact antigens reinfects our body now the type of response that our immune system will essentially elicit is called not a primary but a secondary response it's secondary because it's the second time our pathogen makes its way into our body. Now the response will be different. The question is why? Well, because during the primary response, not only was the adaptive immune system producing plasma cells, but it was also producing memory cells. And recall that memory cells are those white blood cells that actually store a copy of that antibody for that specific antigen. And the reason the memory B cells store that antibody is in case reinfection actually ever reoccurs, actually ever takes place again. So what happens when the body is reinfected by the same type of pathogen? In this case, the immune system will elicit a second their response and it will be different than the primary response because of the presence of these memory B cells and memory T cells. So let's redraw this diagram as shown. So we have first infection taking place and then we have the end of our primary phase, our primary response. And right when our primary response is over, we have the second reinfect, the second infection taking place. So we are reinfected by that same exact pathogen that contains that same exact antigen. Now, because we have those memory B cells in our blood, circulating our blood, our lymph, and our tissue, we have that specific antibody that can actually bind and destroy that antigen and so what that means is the latent period will be much shorter because our adaptive immune system already consists of those memory B cells and memory T cells that contain that specific antibody and so the latent period will be much shorter on top of that the concentration of the peak, the highest amount, the highest concentration of immunoglobulins that we produce will be much greater than in the primary case as a result of the presence of those memory cells. And also, notice what happens in this phase. In this case, we have a very sharp decline in the concentration and it drops to a very low undetectable, undetectable level. But in this particular case, it doesn't drop to a low value, it remains relatively high. And that essentially ensures that all that pathogenic antigen is completely destroyed by the antibodies in our blood. Now, in the case of the primary response, the major immunoglobulin was immunoglobulin M. But in the case of our secondary response, the major immunoglobulin is immunoglobulin G. So once again, following the first infection, the immune system will produce memory cells that will carry that copy of the antibody that is specific to that particular antigen. 
and when the antigen reinfects our body the second time we're already going to have that antigen circ that antibody circulating inside our blood and so that will create a much quicker a much more rapid response with a shorter latent period because of those memory b cells in addition the amount of antibodies that is formed will be much greater and actually we're going to need a much lower concentration of antigen to elicit a secondary response than to elicit a primary response. That's another difference between the primary and the secondary responses. So let's conclude by comparing and contrasting these two different types of responses. So for the primary response, we have a relatively long latent period but for the secondary response we have a relatively short latent period so that means our secondary response is much quicker to take into effect as a result of those antibodies already being present inside our blood now for the case of the primary we form a relatively low concentration peak concentration of antibodies but here we form a much larger peak concentration of antibodies so peak simply means the highest value of these particular hills now uh, notice that during our decline phase we dropped to a very low undetectable value in the primary case but in the secondary case we dropped to a high to a higher value and because we have a higher value of antibodies during our decline phase the secondary immune response will be much more efficient in actually binding the antibodies onto our antigens and destroying those antigens and finally we see that in the primary response we use immunoglobulin M but in the secondary response we use immunoglobulin G now the final difference is to initiate a primary response we need a relatively high amount of antigen in our body but to elicit the secondary immune response we actually need a much lower concentration of antigen inside our blood